when you bring someone on, we're going to have something called Global Talent University. You can simply drop that person into Global Talent University. I'm pretty picky with who comes in. You know, my philosophy is always, if I can't get a beer with you, I'm not going to let you in the franchise system. You know, what's interesting is that we, <clears throat> we follow, we have some W2 employees that are full time. We have, actually, we have a good group of, of guys in Florida, uh, kind of scattered throughout. It's just kind of happened, uh, coincidentally, but you know, we have a, a full-time person in Egypt and he helps to handle, he runs our whole back end of everything and is incredible. And then we have <clears throat> someone on our team who lives in Colombia, right. And, uh, and our appointment setting, uh, I don't know that, uh, what's fascinating to me is how ta tactically and strategically, uh, how you've done that to align it with the the needs of the business, which is uh, which is pretty cool. So, do the franchisees get to use that same team as well? Is is that how it works when when they're coming on board? Like they're essentially plugging into that infrastructure that you've already built from that perspective. My typical advice for franchisees when they're recruiting remote team talent is to try to get someone them on their own full time. It's cheap enough um, and you could train them to do exactly what you want them to do as well. So we actually help franchisees recruit their first remote team talent. Now, some of them could be from South Africa. It's usually like a network effect of someone who works for us knows someone and it kind of works out that way. Other people would be via our SOPs on job postings and how to actually find someone, how to vet someone. What we're building right now, which I haven't even told franchisees yet, is something I call Global Talent University. Like Tarek, imagine... You're brand new. You don't know what you're doing as much. You come on board and you're like, all right, I'm going to invest in remote team talent. I'm going to hire someone. You hire someone. And you're like, I'm new myself. How am I going to train this person? What's There's so much to train them on. Like, where do I even start? When you bring someone on, we're going to have something called Global Talent University. You can simply drop that person into Global Talent University. How to use the software systems we use. What's the sales script like? All these different things involved with onboarding someone is kind of done for you instantly. So by the time they go through that and they come out, there's someone who mostly knows the SOPs of made this and you haven't had to do a single thing at all, right? There's things like that, which it makes zero sense to do for one location. But if we have 20, 30, 40, 50 locations, <clears throat> all of a sudden it makes so much sense for the franchise already to invest in that because it helps everyone out. And if you do it once, you can do it for everyone. Uh, but one location, it's just, there's no need to do something like that. Yeah, for sure. And I forgot to ask this earlier, how many franchisees do you guys have? And like, what's your ideal avatar for, for a franchisee that you guys are looking for? Yeah, it's a good question. It's it's so interesting too, because I think um, earlier stage franchisors like us, we're always figuring that out as we go. Of like, okay, who is the ideal avatar? Um, we currently have 20 franchisees, 23 total locations. And um I'll be honest, we're, we're like, I'm pretty picky with who comes in. You know, my philosophy is always, if I can't get a beer with you, I'm not going to let you in the franchise system. You want to like who you work with, right? That's kind of the point of business is to support your lifestyle, make sure you enjoy the people you work with. So that's a big part of what we're doing over here. The ideal avatar is probably someone who might want to get into an entrepreneurship, but isn't too sure about it. You know, maybe they're a little bit scared. Maybe they have fear, overwhelmed, they've been procrastinating. Um, those are, might be the emotions someone might be feeling. Many times they come from a nine to five and they know that that's not what they want to do long term. They want to escape. They want a more safe route to do that as opposed to going through entrepreneurship alone. And entrepreneurship by itself is kind of risky, right? Like in my opinion, working in nine to five is even more risky. But if you get into business by yourself, you have to figure out how to do systems. If you're a brand new entrepreneur, you don't quite know what you're doing yet. So this is kind of like a escape route, a safety route for them to go along. So oftentimes it's someone who wants to leave the nine to five. Um, sometimes it's, at least from what I've seen, it's um, dual earners. So a husband and wife team, one of them wants to keep their nine to five. One of them wants to drop into entrepreneurship. Uh, it's someone who wants some level of remote um, freedom. Doesn't mean they're going to travel the same way I did, but they like that flexibility of working from home. Many times the person who works the nine to five also has um, work from home capabilities. So they can kind of start this on the side, at least at the beginning before transitioning to full time. Um, so that's oftentimes who we're looking for. It's kind of that um, 
person who's newer in, on, into entrepreneurship or maybe doing their first or second thing uh, and wants to use our systems to scale faster and leave the nine to five. If you enjoyed this short clip from the podcast, you can check out another short clip right here. Or if you want to watch the full episode of this podcast, you can watch that here. And remember, knowledge is not power. It's applied knowledge that's power. Take care. Have a great rest of your day.